Okay, it's Chicken Bone John here with just a little addition to those basic tools for building cigar box guitars. What have I added? The sort of stuff that you might have lying around the house. A couple of screwdrivers, large and small posi drive, a flat bladed electrician screwdriver, and a regular flat blade screwdriver. This is a bit of a specialist piece of kit. It's a Japanese pull saw. I think this one's called the, uh, I think that's a Dizu, I can't remember if it's a Dizuki or a Kabata. Please excuse me not knowing. These have got a very fine blade and they meant to be, they, they cut on the pull stroke. That's why they can be so thin. You need to take care of them, but they're great for doing things like doing cutouts on boxes. Cast iron clamps. You cannot have enough of these. This is uh, most useful one, four inch, proper cast iron, not cheap, nasty, lightweight ones. Get a proper good one. We've got dozens of them. Yeah. For fretting, we have a crown fretting saw, a fret rocker to pick up whether you've got any high frets, A good pair of stout side cutters. These are Nipex, set of 180 long. They've got real proper hard jaws, great for cutting fret wire. Another couple of basic things. Pliers. Some small, ordinary pliers. Again, Nipex brand. And some end cutters, cutting strings and stuff like that. Again, Nipex brand. You pay the money and they last for ages. A few of the basics. Some basic cheap spanners, a 13 and a 10 mil. Most useful thing. The 10 mil will do um, your uh, pot nuts, uh, screw down bushings on machine heads. The 13 will fit most jack socket nuts and a couple of good quality scalpels. Swan Morton, I use the, I use the large and the small blade ones. They're great for cutting out fine work and so forth, sharpening your pencils and whatnot. So not many extras to uh, pad out your toolkit. Go slowly. Don't throw money at it. Take your time. Buy what you need. Think about it. That goes the same for hand tools and power tools in particular well with both hand and power tools think about buying the best you can afford with hand tools you have got the great option of buying second hand the majority of stuff here is second hand and a lot of people will say it's actually better quality as i say i bought a couple of these hand saws i think it was 22 25 quid to get something of that quality these days, proper hardwood handle, tempered steel blade, you probably put a one in front of that for each one. You know, a hundred pounds, a hundred pounds plus. Same with this. You can buy a cheap saw, which will be perfectly good for a tenner from B&Q. And there's nothing wrong with that. But this won't be much more that's already had a lifetime's work and it's ready for another lifetime's work. You, learn, you need to have to sharpen and set these, but it's a beautiful feel in the hand. Uh, it's much easier to work with one of these than a modern plastic handled saw. This is, uh, when they've got some weight to them, the weight does the job. Same with the plane. The weight of that thing beds down onto the work and makes cutting uh, planing a pleasure but you do need to keep them well maintained keep them sharp um, this I think is the that's the default the 151 Stanley we've got a, an Indian patterned one and an, an, an ant and that is very good it cuts just as good as this but what I've done on this I've actually honed that on a uh, diamond sharpening plate so that that is absolutely flat the throat on that the face and then the blade 
is sharpened. That's essential to keep your tools sharp. With a modern saw, you throw them away. With these, you do need to occasionally sharpen them. Anyway, hope that's of some, some use. And I really would encourage you, please, you know, go old school. Learn how to use hand tools. You'll see we've got a rack of them up there. Um, that sounded a little bit. We've got, uh, I've got stuff which we set, use setups in my uh, office studio. So it's the way to go. Bye for now.